Welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, software engineer and entrepreneur, and in this video we'll be learning about MVVM in Xamarin Forms. Now what is MVVM? MVVM stands for Model View View Model, and it's simply an architectural pattern. It's a way of architecting your Xamarin Forms application such that the user interface and the business logic, the data structures, all that are cleanly separated. So, for example, this is important because if you want to ch make a change to the user interface to a button or an image or a list, list view, for example, that change doesn't trickle down to the data layers, to, to, to your models, etc. So they, they don't know about, about each other. So this will make your application um, very extensible, um, easier to maintain, and in the future if you want to add uh, new new classes, for example, new methods, new views, then you're going to be able to do, that, to do that very flexibly without breaking other parts of the application. So very, very, very cool and very important, very useful uh, thing to do. And this is actually best practice in uh, Xamarin Forms. So the way we do it in the actual application here, from the previous video on list view here, we have our our page of, of our app where we saw our, our list, our list view, and that would be the view, right? That's what the user sees. That's the, the actual uh, view, the user interface of the application. And then I created a folder here called views, and he, this is how we actually do it. We create three folders, the models folder, the view models, and the views folder. And I've already created them here to save a little bit of time. And then I just moved my test app page uh, into into the views folder so that's the views and now for the models now in this case for this example since we have a list view we want to display a list of customers in our application in our, in our list so that's what we want to do but we want to you do it using MVVM so I'll show I'll show you how that works so we go to the models folder first then we say add new file and then we're gonna add a new uh, a new class here and we'll call this class customer it's the customer class and here in the customer class, we are going to add a property. So let's say we just want a, two properties, first name and last name. So here you can say prop, and our, it brings up this snippet. So we want a, a property of type string. And then here we want, let's just call it first name. Good. And then we want just one more property, just to keep it simple. You can have as many as you want. Again, type string, and then this... Um, Oh, just, there we go, uh, last uh, name, there we go. So we have our model, and here we are, this has nothing to do with the view, this is just data. This is just in the abstract, we have a customer, and as property, it has uh, first name and last name properties. Here we have not created an instance of the customer class, this is just the class by itself in the abstract. So this is, this is going to be in our models. Um, now, to stay with this theme, to keep everything separated and to actually adhere to the object-oriented programming uh, principle, which is called the single responsibility uh, principle here, we are actually going to add a new uh, folder here, and we're just going to call it services. This um, In this folder, we are going to create a new class, and this class, its job is going to be to manipulate model data. I mean, we can do it in the model uh, too, but for best practice to show you, like I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it in, in in its own class with its own method. So this is going to we're let's just call it um customer services, just simply. And here in this customer services, we want a method. So we want a public method, and we want this method to return a list. So we want this method to grab this customer class and create several instances of, of the customer class, several uh, customer objects, and put them in uh, and make a list out of them. So here we want this uh, method to return a list. And yeah, it, it actually uh, requires a namespace, but so customer. And then here, it shouldn't recognize um, that, but let's just, and let's just call it get uh, customer. So I'm just waiting for it to bring up the, um, yep, yeah, that. And here, quick fix, and using this in the systems.collections.generic namespace, as we've seen before. And then the customer, we also need to bring in the namespace, which is in the models namespace in our, in, in our app. So we have that. It's red because it needs a return type. So let's go ahead and create our new list. So we want, for example, um, variable, um, let's call it list. List is fine. And we'll say new list of type customer 
And here inside, let's actually go ahead and close it. And here inside, we're gonna go and create our, our, our customers. And we'll keep it simple. We'll just um, for this one, we'll just say mm, new um, new customer. And then inside inside that customer, we'll, we're going to to assign the prop. Actually, let me remove that. So we'll we have our first name property, and it's just the type string. So let's just call it let's say Elon. Some of you probably know where this is going. Last name Musk. So we have one customer. And this is in, in, inside our list. So our list contains now one uh, customer instance. Go say new, new customer, creates a new instance. And we just we just want, uh, let's just grab five of these. One, two, three. okay. And we'll just change uh, the name here. So let's just say for this one, Mark Zuckerberg. So yeah, a lot of you can actually see the theme here. Let's call it Jeff Bezos, founder and CEO of Amazon, Facebook. SpaceX, Tesla, etc. And here we'll do Patrick Collison, founder and CEO of Stripe. And here we'll just do Drew Houston here, founder of Dropbox. So we have okay, so we have our th our five customer objects inside um, and in this method. That actually that creates a list, and then after creating the list, which we've created here, now we need to return it for this method. So we say we use the return keyword and return list, and this is our list here. So we're just returning it for the method. So when you call this method, it's called an instance method because you need an instance of the customer services class to call this method. If I called it, if I use the word static, then we could just call it directly from the class uh, without creating an instance. But here it's an instance method, and when you call get customers, you are going to get a list of type customers. You're going to get this list. So we have this. Cool. So now, now we're going to go to our view models folder, and as you see, I've already created a, uh, a class here. I'll show you in just a moment what that is. So we'll just create. And by the way, um, the way the model interacts with the view model is through like through method calls. So we call a method uh, and return something, or through method method callbacks. And the way we interact between the view and the view model, the view model is sitting in between. So the views, views and the view models communicate. And the view models and the models communicate, but the views and the models don't communicate directly. They communicate through th through, through this view model um, class instance here um, in between. And the views and the view models, uh, the properties are connected through bindings, through data bindings. So everything is going to come together very beautifully here in this. Um, it's, it's introductory. We'll get into more detail later. Let's go ahead and add a new uh, file for view models folder. Let's just call it, keep it simple, main view model. Let's create a new instance, and here in our main view model, we want a property of type list again because here in this class we're going to create this, return it, and then we want it in our in our view models. So we're going to create a new um, uh, property here, property, and it's a property of type list of customer, and then the property here, um, let's just call it customer list. Okay, again, let's actually bring in the namespace, make sure we have everything we need. Cool. And now here in the constructor method of the view model, here we are going to create a new instance of the customer services class. So we're going to say variable, uh, let's just call it service. It doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, let's say new customer services, and as you see, is not coming up. Why? Because we need uh, the serv the namespace for this one as well. New customer services. It's good. And now for our property here, for our customer list uh, property in our view model, we want to assign it service dot. And here we access the get customers method here. Close it. So here our customers list property is going to we're going to assign the the return type of the get customers method in our customer services instance uh, here. So our get customer returns a list, and this list is assigned to this list uh, property. So now we have we have it here. Now whenever before we do the bind whenever we do the bindings of this property to our view, um, Xamarin Forms needs a notification. Uh, protocol, a mechanism for the to refresh the user interface so that Xamarin Forms knows that a property has changed. And that's this uh, view model base here that implements um, 
an interface called I notify property change. It's very self-explanatory. It's just an interface that notifies that a property has changed. So in our main view model, we're just going to inherit from view model base. And this inheritance here is going to grab these uh, methods. So there's uh, on property change, which is going to be called when a property changes, and the set property, which is going to set the property to the new value if a property did change. So actually, uh, uh, here we actually need a not just a public property, would, but we need a we need a private field. So we'll say a private. Uh, it's the same thing. Let's say a customer, and then we'll call it customer list with the lowercase um, initial. And then here, we in our in our get, we are going to do this, and we are going to say return. Oops, customer list. And then in our setter here, we are going to call set property, which we're, because of the inheritance here, we're we're getting set property, and we need the for the reference we need the um, the field value customer list, and then for the second parameter we just need. Um, the value keyword. Yeah. So now, when the when the this property changes, the the view will be able to refresh, and 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 vice versa. We need a back and forth two way bindings here. Also, the view model is going to know that a property in the view has changed. So this is just very simple. Just keep your view model base class here that implements I notify property changed and inherit in all or in all of your all of your view models. My view models typically I'll just have view model inherit have them inheriting from view model base and just have that already already in place. We do need the set property here, but it's very simple once once you get used to it. So we have our view model, and now we want to go to our views. And we already had our views from the previous video. We had this list. We don't need the list up here anymore because it's coming from the model and here we have we had our list view with our bindings so we're not uh, going to need this uh, so now the way that we connect the view so the the user interface to the view model is through data binding like I said so we need a binding context so here for our page uh, we're going to say this so this is the this instance let will say binding context and we're going to assign a new instance of the main view model. And if it doesn't appear, we know that we need a namespace. So quick fix using the view model's uh, namespace here. So we have that. So the binding context for the page has been set to main view model. And as we know, main view model contains the only property um, that we that we care about um, here. Um, sorry about that. Let me uh, let me just close up Skype for a moment. So we so we have the binding context here. And now we come to our to our list view here. And now we are going to and now for the item source, which we had done in code previously, now we're going to do it here. So we have uh, item source, as we know it's a list. So now we are going to say we're going to do a binding. So for the item source itself, we are going to say binding. And the binding context, as we know, it's an, an inheritance hierarchy. So when you set the binding context to the page, it's already inherited, uh, automatically inherited by the children. So this use a children of content. It's a child of content page. So the, the binding context is already that. So we're going to say item source binding to, and now we need to, to bind to this to the to the property itself. And the property uh, in the main view model is customers list. So cust, uh, customer customer list is the property. So we we'll say custom binding to customer list. And that's it. And also, just um, just in case the the rows of the of the list view uh, change for some reason, and you want them to adjust to to fit the data inside, just set the has on even rows property um, equal to true. Okay, so we have our view cell here, and now so we want to display in each cell of our list view, we want to display first name and last name of our customer. So let's just add a layout, a stack layout here. And inside that stack layout, let's add um, let's add two labels. Let's add one more label, and each one is going to contain um, the the appropriate property value. So for so the orientation is by default vertical. So we want to set the orientation property heel uh, here to horizontal, so that first name and last name are displayed left to right in a in, in a horizontal. Uh, row here and our label here so for the text property of the label we are going to, to do another binding and now the binding context uh, here as we know is so is the item source property so we're binding to customer list so customer list is the binding context so now we can bind to a specific property inside customer uh, the, that customer list so for example as we know customer list 
is coming from the from the service and here we have our customer so we can go ahead and bind to properties inside because it's going to be binding um, to, to those to, the, to those individual elements so here the, the way it's going to happen is um, that here the the view cell so the cell inside the list view is going to be binding to each instance of the customer class so we want to bind to these properties so for the first label we're going to say binding to first name and we're keeping it very simple up for for this um, introductory video to MVVM and for the other one we want to do a binding to the last name property and now uh, we're ready to go let's actually go ahead and run the application and let's see what we get and again the the wisdom here the the value is that if we ever want to change like a label the stack layout we want to change it to a grid or we want to change the label to something else if we want to make changes to view elements it's not going to break the model because as you see the model this doesn't know anything about the view the customer services this doesn't know anything about the view the the thing that's connecting them is um, the the view model there so as we saw here we have um, although it's a little um, rough here because I didn't clean it up with you know assigning different properties and um, in the list view just this is just to show you very very simply but as you see we have Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Patrick Collison, Drew, Drew, uh, Drew Houston here and and all done through through bindings using using MVVM and the views this and the models where these where this came from where this data came from is completely separated and likewise if we want to add another property here for example uh, another property we it can be anything integer um, you know, they, wh whatever property you want to add to, to your models is not going to affect the view or break anything because they're completely separated. So it's very easy to add new classes, add new methods, and add new um, visual elements uh, here in the future because you've architected the application using uh, the models, views, and view models uh, pattern. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Also, please subscribe so you'll be notified um, when new videos come up, and I'll see you next time.